Hey y'all, Chris from Key Farm. So, this is a long-awaited video by just a few people. <laughs> Alright, so this is last year's uh, radio-controlled beach wagon. And I've had a few comments of how did you do this and how did you do that. So... Today's the day we go around it and we see what it is and how it is and how everything works. All right. Hey, y'all. Chris from Key Farm. So I'm about to show y'all how I built the radio-controlled beach buggy. Yeah, I love this thing. These things don't get watched very much. They're just not very popular. So if you get any useful information out of this, uh, I appreciate it if you'd like or comment or share. Every little bit helps the channel. And maybe hang around and watch another video when we're done here. Um, I would recommend building one of these if you have any desire to. It's not that hard. Um, you see me sitting in this mobility chair. Um, a lot of the parts you're going to need could be sourced from a mobility chair. If you find one not working, most of the time what's bad on it is the batteries. That's where this one came from. So um, maybe that'll help you source some parts. Or I'm going to show you where you can get them on eBay as well. All right, y'all. What you need to know is this is version 2. The first one is back here in the back of the shop. And it's still together, but it didn't work in soft sand. And if you've seen the original video, you know that that is the carrier on top to put all your beach chairs in. Um, cooler. Everything that you can take out on the beach. So... Moving forward, first we're going to do all the mechanics, and then we're going to look at the electronics. So let's move in close here. Alright, so check it out. So this thing steers like a skid steer, which means this front tire and the back tire on the same side is hooked together, and this front tire and the back tire, they are hooked together. Whatever this tire does, the back tire does. Whatever this tire does, the back tire does, because this axle is split right here. That's why you don't just have a bearing. Can't just have this bearing and this bearing. These are stub axles. This is not connected right here. That's very, very important. Other than that, it wouldn't be able to steer. The first one had traditional steering, and it uh, was only two-wheel drive. So this one is four-wheel drive because for sand, you've got to have four-wheel drive. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So this is a three-quarter piece of threaded rod. And the reason I used threaded rod is because I was in a hurry to build this last year. I only had about two and a half weeks. And it takes a while to build something like this when you got a day job. So this is three-quarter threaded rod because these hubs are three-quarters of an inch. They are front tires on 90% of all the regular tractor-style lawnmowers out there. So what I did is I was going to use these tires because it's what I had and it's what's cheap and it's what's available. And they got a three-quarter hub. So if you'll see at the back right here, they just got two nuts right there jammed together. And then on the outside, they have a pin. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a roll pin right there. And a lock washer, and then one on there very, very tight. Now, this thing has enough torque that occasionally one of these will come loose, but it doesn't happen very often. So, friends, that is how the wheel is attached. They're jam nutted back. This has a notch cut in the hub that goes on the roll pin that's through the hub. Now, you can get hubs that have a hole drilled all the way through them, and you can put a pin all the way through them. And I probably would recommend that. Uh, the Surplus Center out of Nebraska sells a lot of those wheels. But I didn't buy these wheels. I had most of these laying around. Or I bought them off Marketplace very, very cheap. So I just notched the hub. The notch comes all the way up to the pin. Locks in. And then the big three-quarter nuts on there very, very tight. Holds everything together. All right, so basically we got a stub axle here. You got a 40 chain. Now look, a belt or lighter chain would work. But Key Farm has pretty much married to number 40 chain. 
every sprocket we got over here, look at all these sprockets. All of those sprockets in there are 40, uh, size 40 sprockets. Um, I did order a grab bag one time that come with some bigger ones. But we're pretty much married to the 40 chain, so I used 40 chain. All right, this sprocket and the one on the stub axle on the bottom side are the exact same size. I don't remember how many teeth they are. That's not really relevant. They just have to be the same. I think they're 14 teeth. I really don't remember. All right, this one is the drive sprocket for this whole side. This drive sprocket, I want to say it might be 16 teeth. Now, because I didn't use shafting like this, this is three-quarter shafting, has a keyway all the way in it, and this will probably be on here at some point, but I haven't had time to do that. I had to physically take my cutter grinder and cut keyways in that threaded rod. I cut a keyway for this one and I cut a keyway for this one. So these are on that shaft on keys with the set screws tightened down very, very tight or as tight as you can get them. So check it out. This stub axle is just linked to that stub axle and this sprocket goes to the motor and we'll go around that side in just a second. Keep in mind two motors driving two sides. So your front and back is achieved by this side doing the same as this side. And 360s is when this is going forward and this is going in reverse. And it does all of its steering like that, like a skid steer. Okay, here on the front side, there is the motor. So this is a typical wheelchair motor. Um, uh, I'll put the name of the eBay store that sells a bunch of these up. Uh, they sell them cheaper than anybody else. If you can find an old mobility chair, mobility chairs will have these on there. You could harvest them off of there. But uh, this style here has worked really good for me. Now, most of the sprockets that you can order are going to be 5.8 sprockets, which is equivalent to 16 millimeter. These shafts, when you get them, are 17 millimeter. So you just got to take your grinder and graze them a little bit until your sprocket will go on there. It has a keyway. You can reuse the same keyway. Uh, put your set screws in and then they're also threaded on the end and you can put a nut on there. These are plenty high enough torque. I've run this thing on 12 volt, 18 volt Ryobi drill batteries and currently it's running 24 volt lithium batteries. So anyway, I think that's probably a 10 tooth sprocket I decided to put on that one. I just had to grind the shaft down a little bit, sand it real good until that sprocket fit, tighten it down with the set screws, put the nut on it, and it'd be good forever. Um, these are three quarter holes in here, so it's real easy to make brackets and put three quarter bolts through it. I do have a piece of all thread shaft on that side so that I can move it this way or that way and then just anchor the other side as needed. So that's pretty much how the motor is mounted. So that is the anatomy of the bottom of the beach buggy. Now, let me flip it over and let's talk electronics. You got a couple of different ways to go when it comes to electronics. First of all, You've got to have your transmitter. I use this Fly Sky. They're on eBay for about 70 bucks. You get this and you get one receiver. You can order more receivers for about $15 a piece. And then you can use the same controller on every project you got, as long as it doesn't have more than six channels. And most of my stuff is two or three channels, so I'm good. All right, that right there is called a saber-tooth motor controller. The way it works is you got two plug-ins right here. It does not come with them. We'll get to that in a minute. You have to either cut these off of old servos or have servo extension wires. And you got to plug one end in, plug in a logic wire there, a logic wire there, both reds there, both browns there. It's pretty, I'm going to zoom in. It's pretty simple. But it does come with wiring. Uh, diagrams if you don't know what I'm talking about all you got to do is read that and it will help you out 
All right. So, the saber tooth. This bad boy here does all the work and it costs about $125 plus tax and shipping. It's made by a company called Dimension Engineering and it works really, really well. So you run one uh, power and ground to the motor here. Doesn't matter, power or ground, it does not matter because the motor controller is going to swap them anyway. Same thing over here, power and ground to the motor. Now what is real important is this is power coming in and this is ground coming in. You cannot swap these if you do bad things happen. But the motor controller swaps these the whole time that it's running when you go forward and reverse. So anyway, that does all the work. Between your receiver communicating with that, this tells it when to go forward, when to go backward, and it's all on one it's, it's all right here. I mean, it is fantastic. It's a very, very good system. Now, with that said, that Sabertooth will run... I know I've run it on 12 volts. Uh, well, I think I've run it on 12 volts. I know I've run it on 18 volts and 24 volts. So, let me show you my 18-volt system. So, this right here... I use Ryobi power drills, right? You can buy these hats. They're about 12 bucks a piece. And they just have wire leads coming out of them. And I ran this thing on the beach last year off of these large lithium 9 amp hour batteries. I had two of them. I've ruined one. It got wet. Don't, don't let them do that. So I've ordered new ones. I think I got 8 amp hours this year just because I cheaped out. But anyway, these are parallel, which means both reds. To the red and both blacks to the black and by the way that same company where i get those um motors they also sell these connectors and i highly recommend them so anyway you can run it off 18 volts like that and that gives you um 18 amp hours because you're running two of them parallel well i mean if you run little batteries you're not going to get that much but if you run the big batteries like that that's 9 amp hours times 2 because you're not changing the voltage. You're running 18 volts. Now, you can step up to the lithium battery world. These are very expensive. Um, these are about $80, $85 per battery. But you see, this is 24 volts. 24 volts makes it faster, has more power. So you see where I got the positive and the negative hooked together there. And then it comes out here with another one of those. So the reason I use those is because on the machine, I can put one of these and I can plug either that up to it and make it 18 volts, or I can plug that up to it and make it 24 volts. I can run it off of whatever I need to run it off of. Uh, I don't know if I covered it, but your motor's just got standard two leads coming out of them. That's pretty easy. Uh, the motors are just mounted to the frame. The frame was just built to the dimensions that I needed it to be, you know, to carry all my stuff. All right, but this is not your only option for a motor controller, so let's look at another one. So on my other gadget over here, if you haven't seen this thing pull the trailer around, it is awesome. So this is a Cytron, okay? The Cytron is $65 plus uh, uh, tax and shipping. It is um, a lot cheaper. And it's rated almost the same. The Sabertooth is a 2 by 32 amps. This is a 2 by 30. That's very, very close for a lot less money. And it comes with these leads. It is plug and play. You just plug it into the board. You just plug it into your receiver. You're good to go. Binding these receivers uh, to the uh, transmitter is real easy. It takes about 30 seconds. And this, on this side, hooks up the exact same way. You got power in, you got ground in, then you got your motor leads and your motor leads. I've run this one more than I've run the other one, and it works just as well. And you see that I got the tail coming out the back. This one, as well, will run on either 24, 12, or 18 volts. So, y'all, instead of just... Uh Looking at me in the chair talking, I'm going to give you some action shots behind a voiceover. 
But anyway, all I wanted to tell you is if you're even considering building one of these, I say go for it. It's really not that hard to do. All of the parts are mostly sourced from eBay through just a simple search. That's why I don't post a whole bunch of links going to different stuff because pretty much all of my stuff comes from eBay and some of those links expire. But I've given you the name of where I get all the motors and sometimes they're in stock, sometimes they're out of stock. Um, Ryobi batteries, I don't know if you're using those already, but you know it wouldn't have to be Ryobi, it could be DeWalt or Milwaukee. You can order those hats that just have the power leads coming out of them for pretty much every different brand out there now. Um, so if you wanted to go cheaper than the lithium batteries that's on it currently, like I said, I, I ran it off of Ryobi batteries last year, and I never ran it down. It, it does everything it needs to do. And y'all, from what you can tell from the video you're seeing right now, this thing will go almost anywhere, and it is a whole lot of fun. So hey y'all, if y'all get any questions, just uh, uh, hit me with a comment. I tell you what, comment anyway, it helps the channel. And uh, I, I always end them with love God, love people. That's what's going to matter in the end, y'all.